did George ever speak about the prequels with you or? Yeah, uh, not specifically, but I knew that he had in mind three trilogies and we, we sort of, so one to nine. About... sorry, one to nine, three trilogies. Yeah. Star Wars is a story that has shaped my entire life. I know many new subscribers here or viewers may see my videos pop up and think, ah, just another Star Wars channel, just another guy making a buck talking about Star Wars. Star Wars was introduced to me since I was six years old, and while my life had its own share of trials and tribulations to overcome, both mental and physical, Star Wars characters were always a gold standard to look up to, to reach for, to strive to be like. When I didn't have hope or courage, those characters showed me the way. The first six films made by George Lucas resonated deep within my soul, and I always wanted to know what would George have done after Luke peered out to the tree on Endor's forest moon, looking over at the Force ghosts of Yoda, Anakin, and Obi-Wan Kenobi. Now we've gotten comics and books of what happened next, all of which are now shelved as legends, as non-existent to the timeline of Disney's Star Wars, which ironically continues or tries to from the George Lucas vision of 1-6. to six. Now, in this, I'm going to reveal some very true things, and I have all the receipts for them. From George Lucas's mouth himself, publicized what his treatment for episode 7, 8, and 9 were that Disney threw away, after coaxing him into believing that they would use it to turn into the next three films and complete his story. No doubt the sequels ran discourse throughout the fandom. Some love it, some don't even acknowledge it as part of the leniency of George Lucas. I myself, and if you're new here, fall into the latter category. Now I hope you haven't left yet. Even if you do enjoy the sequels, I wish I did too. And in fact, I'm really jealous of you guys. I want to enjoy them with all of my heart, just as you do. Just as I enjoyed 1 to 6 with all of mine. So let's get that out of the way. Whether you like the sequels or you don't, you have a place here on my channel because you enjoy Star Wars. And I'm not going to think of you any differently, but that won't stop me from speaking my mind about my opinions. Now, George's treatment for the sequels, while many have falsely continued to state that the Disney sequels we got were the photocopy, or at least somewhat, of what George Lucas had written. I will, in this video, provide evidence that they were, in fact, not. And I will go a step beyond, where I'll show you exactly what he had envisioned for his sequel trilogy as well as him also denouncing that the sequels that we got with the Disney trilogy really weren't what he had created or envisioned or gave them to go off of. Now, the following information is from the massive and expensive Star Wars book called Star Wars Archives Episode 1-3, 1 to 3, 1999-2005, to and the information in here are from many interviews with George Lucas from 2019, so very recently at the time of making this video, compared to when, you know, he owned his creation of Star Wars and when he owned Lucasfilm. His conversation with the author of the novel, Paul Duncan, whom I hope to one day interview on the channel as well, is very interesting, insightful, and... It's a great read. The entire book is filled with a plethora amount of different knowledge and insights and behind the scenes of George back when he was creating the prequels all the way up to just a few years ago when he was having interviews and discussions with Paul Duncan. So let's go through different pages and different chapters of the book as we start to explore exactly what his treatment of the sequels was going to be. If you're excited for it, if you can't wait to see what this is all about, please hit like. It really helps the algorithm on the channel, and that's just the way YouTube works, and I want this video to get out to as many people as possible, because there's a lot of discourse going around George Lucas' sequel trilogy treatment, and it's right here. Plain and simple, we got the receipts, so let's get into it. Now, Paul Duncan asks George how he basically could have passed control of Lucasfilm onto Disney in 2012, and this is where it really begins. At that time, George says, I was starting the next trilogy. So he had already started the sequels at this point. I talked to the actors and I was starting to gear up. I was also about to have a daughter with my wife. It takes 10 years to make a trilogy. Episodes one to three took from 1995 to 2005. So if you started 2012, you'd finish 2022. I'd still be working on episode nine. In 2012, I was 69, so the question was, am I going to keep doing this for the rest of my life? Do I want to go through this again? Finally, I decided I'd rather raise my daughter and enjoy life for a while. I could have not sold Lucasfilm and gotten somebody to run the productions, but that isn't retiring. 
On The Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi, I tried to stay out of the way, but I couldn't. I was there every day. Even though the people were friends of mine and they did great work, it wasn't the same as me doing it. It was like being once removed. I knew that probably wouldn't work again, that I'd be frustrated. So right here we can see that even though George, and if this is news to you, he didn't direct episode 5 and 6, but he was on set every single day, despite, you know, him not wanting to be, so that he could just, you know, write the story and have someone else direct it and do all the work. He was micromanaging literally everything, which is about what we're about to hear, read. I'm one of those micromanager guys, and I can't help it. So I figured I would forego that, enjoy what I had, and I was looking forward to raising my daughter. Also, I wanted to build a museum, which I'd always wanted to do, so I was thinking, if I don't do this now, I'll never get that done. And which George Lucas's museum is opening very soon in Los Angeles. I actually drove by the construction site, and it's pretty huge, and the concept art looks absolutely amazing. It reminds me of Padme's ship from Revenge of the Sith. I've spent my life creating Star Wars. 40 years, and giving it up was very, very painful. But it was the right thing to do. I thought I was going to have a little bit more to say about the next three because I'd already started them, but they decided they wanted to do something else. Things don't always work out the way you want it. Life is like that. So this gives you a bit of a rundown that George had already started his sequel trilogy back in 2012 before he sold Lucasfilm to Disney. So he had already spoken to the actors, meaning Mark Hamill knows about this, and it probably influenced a lot of what he said to Ryan Johnson when they were making episode 8. Let's continue, because now this is where it gets really, really juicy. This is what you all wanted to come for. And this is what took me, like, forever to freaking find in this huge, massive book. Okay. I had planned for the first trilogy to be about the father, the second trilogy to be about the son, and the third trilogy to be about the daughter and the grandchildren. Now, if you're confused about the daughter, that's Leia. The first was about Anakin being the father, the second about the son, Luke, and the third to be about the daughter, Leia, and the grandchildren of Anakin. Episodes 7, 8, and 9 would take ideas from what happened after the Iraq War. Okay, you fought the war. You killed everybody. Now what are you going to do? Rebuilding afterwards is harder than starting a rebellion or fighting the war. When you win the war and you disband the opposing army, what do they do? The stormtroopers would be like Saddam Hussein's ba atheist fighters that joined ISIS and kept on fighting. The stormtroopers refuse to give up when the Republic win. They want to be stormtroopers forever, so they go to a far corner of the galaxy, start their own country, and their own rebellion. There's a power vacuum, so gangsters like the Huts are taking advantage of the situation, and there is chaos. The key person is Darth Maul who had been resurrected in the Clone Wars cartoons, he brings all the gangs together. Paul Duncan says, was Darth Maul the main villain? Yeah, George says, but he's very old. And we have two versions of him. One is with a set of cybernetic legs like a spider, which we all saw in the Clone Wars. And then later on, he has metal legs and he was a little bit bigger, more of a superhero. But we did all this in the animated series. He was in a bunch of episodes. This is where it just starts to really pick up, guys. Okay, so he starts to talk more about Maul and Luke and just, it, it blows my mind. I think this would have been so sweet. Darth Maul trained a girl, Darth Talon, who was in the comic books as his apprentice. She was the new Darth Vader and most of the action was with her. So these were the two main villains of the trilogy. Maul eventually becomes the godfather of crime in the universe because as the empire falls, he takes over. The movies are about how Leia, I mean, who else is going to be the leader, is trying to build the Republic. They still have the apparatus of the Republic, but they have to get it under control from the gangsters. That was the main story. It starts out a few years after Return of the Jedi, and we establish pretty quickly that there's this underworld. There are these offshoot stormtroopers who started their own planets, and that Luke is trying to restart the Jedi. He puts the word out, so out of 100,000 Jedi, maybe 50 or 100 of them are left. The Jedi have to grow again from scratch, so Luke has to find two and three year olds and train them. Is it starting to sound familiar guys? Is this kind of what you're seeing, what we're all seeing with the Mandalorian? Luke's looking for Jedi to basically reband the Jedi Order, and he found Grogu, who's essentially a three year old, but he's just 50 because you know he has a longer life expectancy. And then with Fallen Order, we get Cal Kestis trying to find the surviving Jedi of Order 66. Let's continue. 
It'll be 20 years before you have a new generation of Jedi. By the end of the trilogy, Luke would have rebuilt much of the Jedi, and we would have the renewal of the New Republic with Leia, Senator Organa becoming the Supreme Chancellor in charge of everything. So she ended up being the Chosen One. After reading this part in the book, it's crystal clear that Disney did not want to continue George's story with Luke banding together the very young Jedi throughout the galaxy, fighting Darth Maul and his apprentice Darth Talon along with Vader's grandchildren who there have been publications in books that he had written a girl named Kira to be in the picture, which later turned into Rey, but to be honest man, I can't believe everything anymore that I hear from some of these publications. For example, one from this book written by Pablo Hidalgo claiming in George's treatment of episode 8, Luke dies. Right here, from George's mouth, he says by the end of the trilogy, meaning 9, Luke would have rebuilt much of the Jedi and we would have the renewal of the New Republic with Leia, becoming Supreme Chancellor. Now even Mark Hamill when making episode 8 kept asking Ryan to kill him off in episode 9 and to keep him alive in 8, much like could have happened here. But I really don't think George was the type to kill Luke off. I mean, in another part of this book, it talks about how really in Star Wars there are only a few humans that were killed, and mainly the ones in the Death Star in Episode 4 that Han and Luke kill. And he felt really bad about it. The rest are either just stormtroopers, which you don't see their faces as humans. They could be robots for all we know at the time, as it says in the book, and I'll make a video about this. But George was quite against humans killing humans, or humans dying in general, and I think this is partially why we never got the scene in detail with Order 66 of Anakin in the Jedi Temple, which would have been so sweet to see him just, you know, combat these powerful Jedi Masters that he looked up to, or, you know, he was training aside, or with, or even under, and now besting them because he was the Chosen One. After all those years of them trying to subdue him and tell him what to do, and him blaming them for the loss of his mother and, you know, soon enough Padme, it would have been pretty sweet to see him unleash that rage and that new Sith ability on these guys. Which I'm hoping that we're going to one day see. Maybe in the Kenobi show. Maybe in another show. Who knows. Now George even goes on to state Luke would have to train two and three year old Jedi spanning into 20 years before the new generation even begins. This makes me think episode 8 and 9 would have some possible time jump, as doing that time jump in episode 7 to 8 might be just too fast after only having seen him in 6, then seeing him in 7, and then he's dead, or he's just time jumping somewhere. I think the story would have panned out, you know, a few years, as George said, after episode 6, and that being episode 7, and then episode 8 would be him, you know, really raising the new Jedi, training them, finding them, building the new Jedi Order, and then 8 to 9 could be a, maybe, a, you know, a 20 year time jump where we get to see Luke as an older man, kind of, you know, Mark Hamill non de aged, and Mark Hamill could just play himself, maybe, you know, what he looked like in episode actual 7, you know, from J.J. Abrams. Now I think at the end, George would have had Luke go off into the galaxy and run his own errands or continue to train Jedi, passing down the torch to the grandchildren of Anakin, much like Mark Hamill always said that you know should happen when they were making Episode 8. And if you haven't seen those videos, go check out something on YouTube titled Mark Hamill Warns Us About The Last Jedi. And again, this isn't to say that hey, you gotta hate The Last Jedi. This is for you to just have all the facts and you make your own opinions for yourselves. And if you love the film, more power to you, man. That's great. Keep loving it. But I'm just showing you guys the different ideas and the different facts out there and receipts on why there is such a discourse, even with Mark Hamill. And hopefully this puts the nail in the coffin that George Lucas' sequel trilogy was not anything compared to what we got with the Disney sequel trilogy. Now, Leia and Han's son or daughter, much like in Legends, could have been, you know, the grandchildren of Anakin, or if Luke had continued with Legends himself in here, maybe he had a kid with Mara Jade or something like that. They could have written anything at that point. But the point is that we would have gotten the grandchildren of Anakin being Han and Leia's kids. Which, again, we did get partially in the Disney sequel trilogy, it just took a completely different turn. And sadly, there wasn't any sort of a linear storyline there. It was just passed off from JJ to Ryan to JJ, and it was just sort of a measuring contest as to who can do what with each story, and, you know, it was just very loosely written. And I don't blame the writers. I blame the people, you know, who was 
basically in charge of the whole matter, in charge of the story group, in charge of handling this whole thing with respect, but it was unfortunate that we didn't get this treatment because I think it would have A, sold a lot more tickets for Disney, and B, I think it would have been much cooler and made a lot more sense. Darth Maul was very much becoming the leader of the crime world in the Clone Wars, and then developed that arc with Dave Filoni's writing, most likely influenced by George's foreseeing of his character ruling the underworld of the galaxy. I will have a video out tomorrow explaining Crimson Dawn in detail for you, as I think this is where George was going with all of it from Maul's perspective. As for Darth Talon, the idea of having a crazy powerful female character to take Vader's place would have been not only refreshing, but brought a lot of Legends material to light. And that leads to a whole nother rabbit hole that I think would have been pretty sweet. To me, this all just sounds like what they're doing in The Mandalorian, if I'm gonna be Frank, or if I'm gonna be George. <laughs> I'm not surprised in the least at all, so uh, with Dave and John running the show and George Lucas having been on the set, I can only kind of imagine or hope that the private conversations the three had together were pretty sweet. I can see John sitting down with George and Dave next to him saying, all right, so what's the deal? Tell me your sequel trilogy treatment. What was going to really happen in your mind? And then a lengthy discussion about this treatment would be explored like the three best friends talking about Star Wars fan fictions, like kind of, you know, we all do in our personal lives. I think Luke coming back in The Mandalorian, having heard Grogu's call on the Seeing Stone, is just an echo of what George had said right here with this treatment, that Luke will have to train two and three year olds and span 20 years into the next generation of Jedi, which is pretty much the same timeline between what we see in The Mandalorian and then Episode 7. So things are starting to add up here, and I think it could lead into uh, possibly an echo of this treatment at least between 6 and 7 for The Mandalorian. Now, what I also think is happening with the book of Boba, which is very interesting, you know, don't sleep on that one, is that it's leading us into this underworld that George wanted to highlight here. He also wanted to highlight this in the game 1313, which got cancelled by Disney, and also in the underworld show, which was supposed to, rumored, to have explained why Palpatine turned to the dark side so badly. And it was actually because of a woman. She broke his heart, and he became even more and more evil. But that's just a rumor. That's just from someone who worked at Lucasfilm and that was written online somewhere. I don't remember who said it, but he said he saw the original script and um, that's basically what was supposed to happen, which I think is so ridiculous. I don't think, I think that just makes Palpatine too human and his whole power coming from a bad breakup, just, it's kind of comical, but it is what it is. I'm glad we didn't get that. So we may get a variation of George Lucas' sequel trilogy with The Mandalorian, just not the way it was originally intended. I think it'll have story elements and ideas from George's sequel treatment, but the characters will shift a bit. Like Darth Maul, you know, being Boba Fett now, possibly. Um, you know, Maul coming back is impossible, as he's been killed already by Obi-Wan, you know, twice, and then resurrecting him for the second time would be just weird. Boba will be the Maul who will rule the underworld, and I think it could bring us into touch with Darth Talon. I still think very much that she could have a hand in all of this, with her demise or story either ending before Disney's Episode 7, or her being locked up during their time, only to break free or to be broken out of jail after Episode 9. Either way, I think with Filoni and Favreau behind The Mandalorian, behind Book of Boba, Obi-Wan, Rangers, and more to come, there's really no telling what we're going to see but I imagine it will be the closest thing to George Lucas' Star Wars that we will ever get again. Thanks so much for watching this video. Please let me know what you think of George's treatment. This is from the horse's mouth, guys. Uh, I'm not making this up. This is in a publication. It's in a massive, massive Star Wars book. There's also Star Wars Archives by Paul Duncan, uh, episodes four to six, and I'll be going through all of those as well. I have the book. It's They're just huge. They're massive books. Uh, and I can't wait to go through them. So to get this one, I got it online. I got it on Amazon and it took, it took actually a couple months to arrive. I think it came from Ireland and I had to buy it. I think it was used or new. I, I no, actually, I think it was new. Well, for the price, I hope it was new, but it took a long time. So these books seem to be a little bit difficult to get, but I believe there is going to be an updated version or rendition of them, so you guys can look out for that or more concise version of them. Uh, so check that out. 
if you guys want this book, it is a bit pricey, but it's really worth it. It's got so much information, so much cool stuff, so much original concept art that I have never seen before. You can't find this stuff online. Uh, so you can go check that out if you like. Let me know what you think of his original treatment for the sequels. And if you still enjoy the Disney sequels, more power to you. I love you. I appreciate you all. Thank you for watching this video with me. And please let me know what you think down below. Find me on Spotify, Twitter, Instagram. You guys have been killing it on the Spotify podcast and you've been killing it on the website. I'm going to give you guys some exclusive stuff coming soon for the website forums. You guys have been blowing it up, so I really appreciate it. And I will see you guys in the next episode of Star Wars Theory. Until then, remember, the Force will be with you always.